George, if you look behind me, you can see at the Arc de Triomphe, the scene of so much of the violence last week. The Arc de Triomphe there, which is being kept by some of those policemen. And this crowd goes well down the Champs-Élysées. So many of these yellow vests have turned up to protest already. Of course, 320 people already taken in for questioning. As you say, the authorities have made it clear that they intend to do everything that they can to keep this Saturday less violent than it was last Saturday. But already, George, we'd heard from the Interior Minister yesterday saying that they believed that it was likely to be at least as violent as it, as it was. Melissa, if you could tell us just about the police presence there. I understand uh, thousands of officers uh, there uh, on the streets, and, and we're looking at this live image right now. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, the, the lineup there. Uh, how, how many officers, and is there a sense the police are in position, ready for this? So, so countrywide, George, the number is 89,000 security forces, that is gendarmes and policemen that have been put out onto the streets of the country, 8,000 in the French capital alone. And more than perhaps the numbers, what we've been hearing from the authorities is that this change of tactic, and that's what we've been witnessing here this morning. They've blocked one end of the Champs-Élysées, so the protesters march to the other, they've blocked the other. All of the side streets have been blocked by much more mobile units than we'd seen uh, last week. Last week, you'll remember, the Champs-Élysées was entirely blocked off, so the violence happened all around the perimeter that had been closed down, essentially protecting the presidential palace and a few of Paris's uh, most exclusive neighborhoods. This time, they've more contained the yellow vests that have gathered here so far between the two ends of the Champs-Élysées. Their hope is that they can afford, uh, avoid some of the damage, extensive damage that was caused last week, some of the uh, um, injuries that they might prevent as well. Uh, but of course, it is fairly early here in Paris, and the yellow vests have vowed to come out in full force. As you know, there's been a climb down on the part of the French government on what had been the spark of this protest, the spark of this movement, which had been that hike in duty, the duty on fuel climbed down this week, but the Yellow Vest protesters now in their fourth week of protest have said, George, that it is no longer about that. And a number of them we've been speaking here today have said it's much more about the cost of living and the chant that we've heard over and over is that Macron has to resign. President Donald Trump blessed demonstrations in France continued to protest over an increase in fuel tax and other grievances. The Paris Agreement isn't working out so well for Paris, Trump tweeted Saturday morning. Protests and riots all over France. People do not want to pay large sums of money, much to third world countries, that are questionably run, in order to maybe protect the environment. Chanting we want Trump. Love France. Trump's tweet comes as French police detained more than 200 people in Paris and fired tear gas on protesters during a fourth weekend of demonstrations. The demonstrations in Paris have erupted into the worst riots France has witnessed in decades and a political crisis for French President Emmanuel Macron. The movement began as a rebuke of the country's fuel price hikes and evolved to a broader protest against the cost of living pressures and anger at Macron's government. In his tweet Saturday, in his tweet Saturday, Trump also reiterated that Paris protesters have been chanting we want Trump a claim that remains unfounded. Since taking office in May 2017, Macron has been a champion of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, reaffirming his commitment as Trump announced last year that he was withdrawing the United States from the accord. Many of the protesters known as Gilets Johns or Yellow Vests are angry with Macron for extending the environmental policies implemented under his predecessor, former President François Hollande. On Tuesday, French Prime Minister Edouard Philippe announced that the planned tax hike part of measures aiming to combat climate change would be delayed by six months, from January 1 to mid-2019, in hopes of subduing the protests. I am glad that my friend, Macron, and the protesters in Paris have agreed with the conclusion I reached two years ago, Trump tweeted later Tuesday. The Paris Agreement is fatally flawed because it raises the price of energy for responsible countries while whitewashing some of the worst polluters in the world. The next day, Macron's office announced that the tax increases would not be introduced in 2019. Yeah.